My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. So in this video, we pick up where we left off on the last trip to Pihau. Uh, because we went from there, I say we, Andrea and myself, we went from Pihau and went over to Buena Vista. Now Buena Vista is, by the crow flies, just a few miles from Pihau. But by the way the bus drives, it, <laughs> it took hours. There's no direct bus, so we had to go up to Cordoba, uh, a place called Rio Verde and sit there and wait for a bus but the scenery was spectacular it was uh, green and lush and you see all these coffee farms on the on the mountains and as they run down into the valley and normally I fast forward and I don't put a whole lot of uh, video as we're riding along but in this case, I decided to throw in a few extra minutes because it really was spectacular. And I know things don't translate the best in a video as compared to if you're actually there. But, you know, maybe you get a sense of the flavor, so you want to kind of kick back and go along with the ride. So we get to um, Rio Verde. It's named for the river that runs through there, this little town here. And this is where we had to sit and wait for the bus. And we waited, and we waited. And it was a pretty hot day, actually. We've had, we had a heat wave, uh, so thankfully it's gone now. Not like in the US, I mean, it didn't get up into the hundreds. And, but, you know, it got pretty hot. And there wasn't a breeze here like I'm used to in the north part of Armenia. So we sat here at a, at a table outside of a little restaurant and I just kind of sat there and sat there and buses are coming and we're checking, okay, what buses, we don't want to miss the bus and uh, I think the bus for Buena Vista would only come along about once an hour. We sat there for a few hours and we just watched the world go by. It was interesting, this pork delivery truck it talked about being so low in fat. Um, anyway, it just cracked me up. So we just sat there, and uh, thankfully these buses are are not very dirty because we're sitting there where the buses are stopping. I didn't want, you know, you don't want to get poisoned from the fumes, but it wasn't really even noticeable. Uh, one thing that did stand out was. Uh, there, there are street dogs in this tiny little town. And population in that little town, I would guess, is maybe just a few hundred. So, I mean, it really is a tiny town. So, we finally got our bus, and we left from there, and just get more spectacular views. And we're going up. We're going up, and we're going up. And it seemed like we went up a lot higher than what it turned out to actually be. We were at a lower elevation around 3,000 feet and Buena Vista sits up around um, around 5,000 feet and it was noticeably cooler even though you know it wasn't that you know much more um, in altitude. So we arrived and we decided we were going to catch um, a lunch so we took a quick look around and we go in and we sit down for lunch. This little town is really very pretty. It's got a population of about 2,000 people. It's about the size of Hiron, where I lived in Ecuador for a year. A uh, nice little town. This was a nice little town. You can tell that they're set up for tourists. It, it's, they're geared up and ready for tourists. We didn't really see any. We didn't see many people. Again, it was a time in the day, um, you know, during the week. It just, uh, you know, it, it wasn't peak tourist time. But 
it, you could get a sense of it being touristy and and that's okay uh, it wasn't heavily so but the people that lived there you were kind of going about their thing in this building next to where we had lunch you could see a half a dozen or a dozen guys uh, playing pool on uh, several different pool tables drinking beer having a good time you know around lunchtime <laughs> or in, you know in the afternoon and um, you know everybody was uh, friendly enough and it reminded me of uh, small working class towns in upstate New York where people get together at the bar and throw darts or play pool and just uh, a lot of laughing going on and a lot of uh, teasing of each other and that's what was going on there so we had our lunch there wasn't uh, you know again a whole lot to go out and see the the view is the thing there oh I'm, there's a slogan when you come into town about the view and the slogan for this town is window to heaven I had never heard that before and I found it very interesting you know that Buena Vista it means good view well it's more than a good view it's a spectacular view you're kind of up there and you know surveying all around so we just got up uh, from lunch and decided to walk around the little park you know and see what was going on I looked for some history on Buena Vista and I can't find anything before the 1900s and in the 1920, basically this guy comes along, uh, Jose Jesus Imanas Zepes, in 1928. Yeah, that's a mouthful, and I'm sure I butchered the name. Uh, he came along from somewhere else in Colombia and decided to set up a, you know, a little homestead there. He's, there are coffee growers that already existed. It was a rural area. There's coffee farms everywhere, and that's one of the things to do. There's a couple coffee tours that'll take you from place to place to place and talk about the uniqueness of each particular farm. So, you know, this guy, he set up a little store, and his idea was to be a, like a trading post for the coffee farmers. He would bring goods in to sell to them, and he would buy up their coffee and, and ship it out. And it was pretty successful. He met a local farm girl. And um, no, this isn't a farmer's daughter joke, but he met a local farm girl. He married her. He established a family. And from there, everything just started kind of growing up around him. You know, next they thought they should build a school. The guy had some money. So he also kept giving away the property he had bought for various things where the church sets he you know he donated that property there's a, a park area that he donated the property so he his heart was into this idea of building this community and he took his wealth and just would keep spreading it into the community not giving people you know here's a bunch of money but he would do what he could to spur it along. In 1933, it became an actual uh, municipality. This is the smallest town municipality in, in size. It's the smallest in Quindío. At one time, it was part of Pihau, but it separated off, as I say, in 1933. I was really surprised that I could find no indigenous information about this area. It's like this area had no history. I'm sure at one time there were people that lived there, but it's pretty easy, especially in a secluded, hard-to-get-to place, like this, I think it's pretty easy for things to get lost to history. That in itself is kind of fascinating because it, you know, it 
it presents itself as a bit of a mystery. And I don't know, I'm a bit of a history buff. And, and you know, I follow all of these things about how civilization just kind of uh, builds up and then destroys itself or gets destroyed, builds up again, going back millions of years, that cycle. And it just makes me wonder, you know, what happened in this area. But I'm getting off track. So we walked around this, this center here and there was really not much going on. It was quiet. It was, it was a bright, sunshiny, nice weather day. We decided to um, have ourselves a nice coffee. And so we sit down at this nice little coffee hut and order up a couple iced coffees. Of course, it was spectacular. It was delicious. It was wonderful. And we just kind of chilled and uh, sat there for a while. And it was fun just kind of looking up in the hill. But the bus came. It was time to catch the bus. We jumped on the bus and headed back for Armenia. It was, uh, it was a long day because this was all in one day. Going to Pihau, waiting for the bus, going to Buena Vista. We got back. We were beat. Thanks for watching.